Thank you for tuning into this Automation Life brought to you by Brenner Fiedler. I'm your host, Jeremy Schubert. Each week we discuss technologies used in automation. This week, Paul Oppenheim, automation specialist with Brenner Fiedler, is here to discuss relays. Thanks for joining us today, Paul. Excellent. It's good to be here again. Thanks. Cool. So with relays, what what are we looking at here? What's our... Uh, What's the gist? What, what's the gist of a relay? Well, yeah, so first yeah. of all, we got to take a step back and uh, just kind of, for those who aren't familiar with it, a relay is basically a device that allows you to mate a circuit of one particular voltage with another type of a completely different voltage. Okay. And um, traditionally, we would do this uh, using with what is known as an electromechanical relay. Okay. Uh, and what this consists of uh, simply is uh, an electromagnet. You have a coil on the one side. On mm -hmm. the other side, you have a contact that opens and closes based on whether that coil is energized or de-energized. So uh, traditionally, let's say you have, uh, let's say your, your main primary voltage that you're driving something, um, you're using 110 volts AC for whatever reason. Okay. And the, but the device you want to control runs off of a, a DC voltage of, let's say, maybe 12 volts. Okay. If you obviously ran without using a relay to try using something 110 volts to control that other device, you'd, you'd blow it because it'd be way too much voltage. So okay. there's got to be a way to mate the two. So what we'd do is you'd use 110 volts, and you'd use that to, let's say, charge the coil portion of the relay that creates a magnetic field. Okay. They have a contact on the other side that is drawn to that magnetic field, and it basically closes a switch. And then that switch, which is on the other part of the relay, is what would then switch a 24-volt power supply or some sort of a source that would then control that device you're want to okay. so activate. If you flip the switch and put 120 volts on to the coil of the relay, right. then it could turn on 12 or 24 or whatever is connected to those. It'll just close those contacts together. That's, and a, that's it. Okay. So you're basically cool. through the, through, you're having one circuit made it to another circuit via magnetism, basically. Okay. Or and, and so things are never this simple. What else is out there? You've mentioned electromechanical relay. I'm sure. guessing there's other kinds. A absolutely. And the other one that has been that's come out since then is what you would call the solid state relay. Okay. And now a solid state relay, um, although we use the term relay, it's not actually a a, a relay at all. Uh, it's actually a it consists of what you would call an opto isolator, which uses light. Um, and then its output is what you'd call a triac or a silicon controlled rectifier, which is basically a something that works more on a almost like a transistor style level, okay. allowing energy to flow or not flow based on whether again your primary uh, circuit uh, turns on or off. Okay. Okay. So then I guess what then kind of forces the question is when would you use one or the other? Yeah, I was about to say we got. Uh, a good description of what it is, but then right. what? What's yeah? What's it mean what, now? What's it? Yeah, now why we would got you want this. that? Right. Okay. So, as a result of having why they even invented, let's say, the salt state relay, um, you have to first look at what were some of the disadvantages. Let's say the electromechanical relay. Well, the electromechanical relay, being a physical device, uh, mm -hmm. you basically you have the two forces. You have first of all the magnetic field, which let's say allows the switch to close to allow mm -hmm. energy to flow. And then when you kill that magnetic field, you basically just have a spring that then pulls it back open again. Okay. So and you this have this is why it's always clicking. That's why you hear that click, click. Yeah, that's yeah. you hear that click click. Exactly. Yeah. Now along with that click click you get what's kind of known as contact bounce. And what that means is when uh, the switch closes, um, although we think of it as something turning on, okay, in reality, if you were to actually take, let's say, an oscilloscope and put across this, you'd actually see something like the voltage would kind of bounce from zero volts to, let's say, if it was 12 volts, and back up and down a few times. Okay, and that's from the actual metal pieces making contact and then bouncing off. That is correct. Okay. They actually physically yeah. bounce, okay? okay? And as a result, if your device that you're trying to control is very sensitive to that, it might think that it was sent maybe three or four signals as mm -hmm. opposed to just one single signal. Okay. Okay. So this is similar to like a push button bounce also. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's 100% correct. Okay. Uh, so as a result, uh, when it came, and that, which, which was kind of okay if you're working with uh, a device, let's say like a, a light or something like that, that if there was a little bit of a bounce, it would not really affect it. Mm -hmm. But if you're working with some uh, electromechanical device or even just something that's kind of more on a circuit board level style, 
which is very sensitive to the amount of time it takes to switch from an off to an on. Even if you're that just could, trying to count something. Exactly. Yeah. It could be detrimental. Your counter, perfect example, your counter might count three or four when in reality it should have only counted one. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, one of the reasons why the solid state relay was invented. Um, so since there are no moving parts in the solid state relays, being a triac, okay, that makes it a little bit more reliable. Okay. So, when, when so the there's, on, there's nothing moving. It's not going to wear... So you're going to get a longer life, more switching, I guess. Exactly. more number of switches. Right. Okay. So that's one of the advantages. Uh, another advantage is, since there are no moving parts or anything, the solid state relays can also uh, react faster than a typical oh, okay. um, mechanical based switch as well. Um, and then also, since because there's no uh, moving parts and just have improvements in manufacturing, the solid state relays are typically smaller in size as well. Okay. So that's good for you know fitting inside you know, smaller enclosures. You can have more than let's say on a circuit board or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So uh, I would imagine when you mentioned fast response, so you could use it for something like a, a pulse output driving uh, a step, like a step. You, you probably could. Yeah. yeah, it kind of depends on the solid state relay you get. But whereas like the, the mechanical relay uh, that you purchase might have reactions within let's say like one to five milliseconds or something like that, which is still fairly fast. But when you're looking at, let's say, solid state, you're now getting into tenths mm -hmm. you know, of, of milliseconds or so, maybe even hundreds in some cases, based on what type you, you purchase. Um, again, then, something then would then, want, if just trying to flip the pendulum the other direction, though, one might say, okay, well, then is there ever a reason why I would ever use an electromechanical relay? Yeah. Okay. And the, the reason for that is, uh, since basically a uh, solid state relay isn't a true switching device in the sense of a physical on and off, uh, there's always a bit of uh, current or energy present which holds it into an on or an off state. Uh, so as a result, it never truly turns off, let's say. There's always a certain amount of small amount of current present. This is going to confuse people. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, right. but, but basically what you have, basically in a, in, a, in a nutshell, what you're saying is that there's always a uh, possibility since there's always current present, that your salt state relays generate heat. Okay. Okay, even in an okay. off state. So it's probably off to the point where your device isn't reading it on or it's yes. not acting like it's on, but it's still draining power. The, right, exactly. Okay. And there's going to be heat present, which means okay. now if this is happening a lot and if your enclosure is fairly small, now you have to use heat sinks. Okay. okay. Whereas the mechanical relay, when it's off, it's physically off. You can actually see the metal separate. So there yeah. is truly no energy flow whatsoever. Okay. Okay. So now your solid state relay, you now have to have it, uh, you probably have to have a heat sink to get rid of that heat. So it's one more thing you have to get. Also, if the unthinkable happens, uh, in both cases, if a solid state relay was to short circuit for whatever mm -hmm. reason, mm -hmm. it always or if it was to fail, let's say, it fails in a shorted or an on position. Well, that's not Typically, good. right, which yeah. means energy is always flowing. Whereas generally or typically in an electromechanical state, when it fails, it normally fails in an open hmm. state. Well, so I've heard you, about welded contacts. That can happen sometimes, too. That right? can happen as well, okay. perhaps in, in uh, electromechanical, yeah. but there are far fewer that happen in electromechanical than it happens in solid state. Okay. So it's kind of your, tr your trade-off. Well, probability there, you're saying you're more likely to fail to an unsafe with the solid state, state relay, okay. exactly. So gotcha. you have to now take precautions to making sure that whatever you're using to control the solid state relay, that you don't, you know, push it in a, in a sense that it, it, you you could harm the relay. Let's say. Okay. And what about different loads? For so I see people with heater loads a lot of times using solid state relays. Right. Um, why would they do that? Good question. Usually when you're using a, a solid state relay for heater loads, you're using it in uh, what's called a duty cycle style, where instead of just simply okay. turning off and turning on the heater, yeah. uh, normally you need to kind of sort of pulse the heater, okay. so to speak, so that you're not overshooting the temperature. So this goes back to life cycle and response time. Pretty much, okay. yeah. Okay. okay. So like, unlike, let's say, your thermostat at your house, mm -hmm. when you think you're setting the temperature for 72 degrees Fahrenheit in reality, when you first set it, you turn on the heater, it's going to probably overshoot that 72. Yes. It might go up to maybe about 75, 76, and then it's going to dip back down right. to maybe about 68. Okay, that's a typical electromechanical response. Okay. Whereas with a solid state, you have a lot more control over that, and you can probably go from whatever is the ambient temperature up to your desired 72 and a hold so there. So the output of your PID basically is going to go to that solid state relay. So Correct. Fa okay, that yeah, makes exactly. sense. Exactly. So, so that's you get a fast advantage. response, you get 
uh, the ability to turn it on and off a lot, but you still have a large load, like a heater, that could be using tens or hundreds of amps. That's it. Okay. Very good. So, yes, yeah, so you can kind of see just kind of a, you can see basically there's a time and place for both and what's basically appropriate, again, based on the application. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have this week. Uh, Paul, thanks for joining us again, and thank yep. you all for listening to Brenner Fiedler's This Automation Life. If you have questions about what you just heard or if you have a topic you'd like to hear discussed, please email us at tech, that's T-E-C-H, at B-R-F-A dot com. Be sure to continue tuning in each week, and we'll see you then.